Welcome everyone, this is uh, Rob Pericelli, uh, aka Failed Muso from failedmuso.com and what we're going to be doing here this evening is comparing the Behringer MS101 against its inspiration, shall we say, the Roland SH101. So as you can see here, we've got uh, one of each model. This is a true vintage Roland SH101 in the almost matching red, provided to us by the wonderful Simon Alexander. Thank you very much for your cooperation and assistance. It's greatly appreciated. And the MS101 is provided to us by Behringer. Thank you very much for allowing me to have this and play with this and experience this and learn this. So it's, uh, it's great fun. And the whole point of doing this video is uh, to compare how well Behringer have done with the MS-101 uh, in replicating the, the sound of the original. So as you can see from various pictures uh, that uh, have been floating around, the, the physical uh, dimensions are fairly, fairly much the same. Um, everything seems to be laid out exactly the same. There's a few additions obviously with the, the MS-101 and uh, the SH-101 is uh, slightly flatter, slightly broader, and quite a bit lighter, actually, physically. So that's the looks. We don't really care about the looks today. Today, we care about how these things sound. So straight off the bat, I just want to tell you how I'm doing this. Now, it's not in any way a scientific comparison. We don't have any oscilloscopes or uh, any sort of complex equipment. I've literally got a Roland SH-101, a Behringer MS-101. I'm using the same type of cable going into the same mixer, which is as plain a mixer as I can find. It's actually a Behringer uh, Zenix 802 that I've had for years, and it just serves as a lovely little sub-mixer. Uh, so rather than color it with a more elaborate piece of equipment, I wanted something as clean as possible, and that does the job. So we have those two instruments, just simply connected via their main outputs into the little mixer. That's then coming out and being fed into my Mac, which is behind me, uh, which is recording all the audio. And then we've got a couple of uh, cameras here that are filming the video. The audio is not coming through them at all. Okay, so everything you hear is a direct audio output into a separate audio file. So when all this video is put together, that's what you're hearing. Now, I will also say that I'm in my little office stroke studio and my house has some creaky floorboards, as you might have just heard there. So as I move around, you might hear a few creaks and there's absolutely nothing I can do about that. It really, you know, logistically, I would love to have a separate room, but we're going to have to do with what we've got. But really what we're here to do is uh, take a, a listen to these two machines side by side and see how well they compare. So enough of the talking, let's start. I've already done some comparisons and I personally, to my 49 almost year old years, can barely tell the difference. Um, I popped over to my friend Simon's to pick up this SH-101 and we ran them side by side through his very high end equipment. And similarly, both of us could not tell the difference between either of these machines. Now I appreciate that there is over 30 odd years difference between the circuitry in the MS and the circuitry in the SH. The SH has, um, I've been told by Simon, possibly some very slightly dirty contact. So if you hear a little bit of crackling coming out of that, it's just a little bit of age. Um, the Behringer should be pretty clean, but um, early tests have said to me that these things do really sound virtually identical and so that tells me the Behringer, Behringer have done a great job now obviously the the other thing we have to consider is this video is going to be uh, uploaded to YouTube and YouTube do a lot of compression so hopefully I'm recording this in as high a quality as I possibly can to make it manageable and uploadable hopefully that won't detract too much and you'll get something from this 
What I might try and do at a later stage is um, do an audio only comparison, but this should give you a, a, a very decent approximation. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start off and it's gonna be fairly bland. I'm gonna go through each um, waveform and I'm gonna match the settings on each device and we're just gonna play some notes and see if we just go A, B, A, B and see how they compare. And then we'll work our way through and once we've kind of matched both machines, we'll then maybe take a look at how the MS-101 does a little bit extra. Okay, right, so here we go. Um, we're going to start off with, we'll start off with the, the, the pulse, wave, uh, pulse width um, uh, square wave. So that's gonna go straight up, open the frequency of the filter, and we're gonna do that on both. And let me just make sure I've got my levels okay. So I think straight away, uh, this one's just wandering. I think they're, they're pretty much in tune. Okay, so we're off. Um, this is the, the square wave, the, the pulse width, and we've got the pulse width at zero. We have simply got the frequency of the filter right up uh, the ADSR uh, envelope is set at an attack of zero. The decay and sustain are halfway points and the release is about a third of the way up on both machines. So this is the original SH-101. This is the MS-101. And I think you'll find <laughs> that's pretty close. Yeah, I would think you'd agree. Now you might have noticed that on the MS-101, I just notched the release up a little bit higher than it is on the SH-101. And I did find on a couple of the settings that the, the accuracy is maybe not quite identical. I don't think that's an issue because essentially you, you will get the same sound. You might just have to move a slider just a fraction up or down to get an exact match. So let's just do that an octave up. Oops. I think you'll find again, that's really, really close. So that's the, the square. Um, should we put some pulse width modulation on there just to, to satisfy Mr. Nick Bat because he does love a bit of pulse width modulation. So we're going to put the pulse width modulation up to halfway, the five point. We're going to stick it on the LFO um, to, to trigger that. And we're just going to feed in um, just a few steps of LFO on both machines. And let's see if we can get this close. Now, what we also must remember here is the LFO on the MS-101 has a wider range, has this low, medium and high setting um, that boosts the, um, the capabilities of that slider. So I'm going to keep it in low for the time being. I might need to knock it up to medium. Let, let's have a listen. So let's play this note again on the SH-101 and on the MS. Let's go down an octave. Let's do that one more time. This is the SH-101. This is the MS-101. Apart from maybe a fraction uh, slightly faster LFO on here, that again. That 
pretty much nails it, in my humble opinion. Okay, that's the pulse width. So let's uh, drop that out on both machines. Now let's do the the ramp sawtooth on both. Okay, and again, we're just gonna leave the, the frequency up, the resonance down, no messing around. We'll start looking at those in a little while, but let's start off with uh, the, the, the ramp sawtooth. So this is the SH-101. This is the MS-101. SH, MS. That phasing, uh, I'm, I'm not technically minded in that respect, but I think that would indicate that there's, there's a lot of similarity in the frequencies there. That's the the ramp sawtooth. Now, obviously, the MS-101 comes with a triangle wave as well. The original SH-101 doesn't, so we can't compare those. I won't compare those. Let us now, keeping the the sawtooth in there, let's just put the uh, sub... Actually, let's, let's take the that off there. Let's just do the sub oscillator at one octave down. So, SH-101, MS-101, octave up, SH-101, MS-101. Again, it's pretty much nailing it. Okay, so that's the sub-oscillator. Um, we'll come to some mixtures in just a moment. I just want to go through like the pure stuff first. So you might recall if you've watched my other video that the uh, filter on the original SH-101 self-oscillates as it does also on the MS-101. So let's see if we can get the filter resonating on the SH-101 first. Um, to do that I'm just gonna bring, make sure that's all down. Uh, let's bring those, so let's see. So it's already going there. So let's let's just go for a frequency halfway resonance up full and the envelope at half. Okay, so let's replicate that on the MS101. So frequency halfway resonance full up and the envelope at the halfway mark. So here you can hear a difference near the SH, this is the SH-101. And this is the MS-101. So that's sounding lower, but essentially the tone is the same. Now, let's see if we can get it to match, because as I said, the, just some minor adjustments can get us a lot closer. There you go. I think we're pretty much there. And that was literally just above the five mark, not even halfway to the, the next step. So it's just this tiny amount. SH-101. MS-101. 
So as you can see, as we're going through each step, we're matching. We're, we're literally matching. And if there's any variation, it just takes a slight adjustment on just maybe one of the settings on the MS-101 just to bring it into line with the SH-101. So I think we can safely say at this early stage that the analog circuitry that has been used here, um, which is the 3340 VS, uh, VCO and the filter are virtually identical between the two machines. It's just uncanny. Well, no, it's not uncanny. I mean, I kind of expected it to be like this and I wasn't disappointed. So um, let's see if we can mess around just a little bit with some mixtures and see how things go down in that respect. So let's just make sure that we start off. Um, now we're going to give it a, a full pulse width uh, with a 50% control by the LFO like we did before. Um, so we go up to there. So what we should have, that's the SH-101. Oops, I've knocked the modulation up there. Okay, there we go. So on the SH-101, I'm now going to open up the resonance on that pulse width. And back down. Do the same here. I think the difference there is that the SH-101, just when you get that top end of the resonance, it's not screaming quite as much and felt a little bit smoother in the transition. Let's try that again. This is the MS-101. And this is the SH-101. So it feels like the SH-101 is just a little bit smoother on that resonance than it is on the MS-101. But the effects are the same. So as you get to that to the top of that resonance, you can hear that really high pitch uh, kind of squeal in there. That's halfway. So let's just do a static ch uh, check there. So this is SH-101 and MS-101. Just try, that's a bit too much, isn't it? I think the LFO is just slightly, there you go. So this is MS-101, SH-101, MS-101. Again, I mean, there's so little in it, if anything at all, it really is. It's it's quite incredible. So let's see if we open up the envelope now and see what happens. Just kind of makes it a little milder. And let's try it here on the MS. Yep, same effect really. Um, so let's now add in the sub oscillator. Let's put it up to the top. So we're giving us uh, a little bit there. See how that affects the, the sound. So this is the SH-101. And the MS-101. SH. MS. <laughs> really? Close your eyes, and if you don't hear me telling you, uh, these, they just sound the same. They really do. And I, I know that there are going to be purists out there that are going to say, oh, I can hear this difference, or oh, I can hear that difference. If you can hear that difference, then your hearing is either worse or better than mine. I'm not entirely sure. 
you know how good my hearing is it's fairly good i think um and i'm listening through a pair of bayer dynamic um 770 pro 32 ohm cans so i'm getting a really you know nice sound in my ears and going through speakers or through cans this these things just sound the same so now we've got the sub oscillator let's take the pulse width out and let's put in the sawtooth with the sub oscillator and let's see if we can create let's create a sound on the sh101 that's nice we get that little kind of ringing there let's leave the envelope closed on that let's just do that so let's replicate it over here we've got the uh the sawtooth we've got the sub oscillator one which is down um we've got the frequency of the filter about there and the resonance about there so that's the match settings across the two now we will probably need to tweak but sh101 ms101 oh it's because i'm playing it further down so we haven't got that ringing so let's see if we can get that back in there Now there is a little difference. You're gonna notice that. That's the SH-101, again. This is the MS-101. Ah, there we go. got it I think that's that's you can see that it's there's just a little tweaking there so for example on that particular sound that's sh that's ms so I think you can agree that we're, we're pretty close there the the filter settings, the frequency and resonance settings are slightly different uh, in as much as we've had to open up the, the resonance to uh, 9 on the scale of 10, whereas on the SH-101 it's just about 7, and the, uh, the frequency cutoff is about 6 on the SH-101, and it's just over 6 on the MS-101. So as I said before, um, the, the exact settings are never going to be the same. You know, this is 30 plus years old here on the left. This is brand new on the right, so things are going to be slightly different. This Roland is going to have aged a little bit and is going to have dulled slightly in its uh, performance, whereas the MS-101 is all bright and shiny. But the fact remains is that with a little bit of tweaking, you can get virtually identical uh, sounds from both of these machines. Let's see if we can do something with the envelope there. So we're just going to open up the uh, envelope there. So do the same. That's a bit more extreme.
So I'm hearing there's some difference there. It sounds a bit harsher on the MS. That decay. Oh, there you go. I think that's the biggest difference I've heard so far. And it's not much of a difference. It's probably just a little bit of amplitude in there that's just... That we can just mess around with the envelope a little bit. Sustain. So again, as we said before, with the filter settings, they, they're not like absolutely identical, but they are, you know, ballpark. And when it comes to the envelope, it's clearly the same thing. The envelope is, uh, you know, the settings don't match on the scale. That's fine because, you know, as long as they do match and they're not wildly different, you know, we're getting... We're getting some, some really good uh, matches uh, on here. So let's see what happens if we put... Um, all three and let's bring this down let's see if we can craft something Okay, so I've just created a sound here on the MS-101. Let's try and do that on the SH-101. So uh, what did I do? I brought the, uh, the square and the sawtooth to about halfway and the sub-oscillator to about halfway too. Um, let's see, we brought the envelope down just a little bit on the filter and we put the keyboard uh, tracking up to half. <laughs> And then that's all there. Okay, so there's there's a difference there. We've still got on here. We've still got that. Uh, there we go. Got the right key. So it's a bit brighter over here. Almost there. So, SH one oh one, MS one oh one. Struggling to make these sound any way different. Um, let's put some noise in here. So actually, let's listen to the noise filter. Uh, sorry, the noise oscillator on its own. So let's just drop uh, everything out there, and let's give ourselves uh, fifty percent on the the noise. 
and we'll just put the filter out just wide open shove all of those down and let's hear the this is the noise on the sh101 about half the level and on the ms101 oh take the sub oscillator out Now, I do recall after watching one of Mark Doty's excellent SH-101 videos that he said that the noise oscillator on the SH-101 to his ear didn't quite sound like proper white noise. It was slightly dirtier. And I think it's borne out here. So this is the SH-101. This is the MS-101. And that has a much brighter... If I just ramp that up, let's go full whack. So this is the SH-101. This is the MS-101. It's quite apparent there. So I'm going to do SH first, then followed by MS and just alternate. So this is the SH followed by the MS. I think we can agree that the, the noise oscillator uh, is a little brighter on the MS-101. So, uh, couldn't say why that might be, but... If you wanted to, to soften the noise oscillator, you know, to make it a little bit more um, SH-101-y, Just give it. You might just have to mess around with the filter. There, there is a difference there, um, but again, only a mild one. So I'm, I'm really impressed so far. Um, what should we do next? Let's listen to see how the LFO operates on just a regular um, sawtooth. So we're just going to put that like that. And so on the SH-101, this is what we have. Oops, take the noise out. Nice little buzzy sawtooth. Oh, put that there. That's better. So that's our sawtooth. Now let's uh, modulate that sawtooth, and we'll modulate the waveform. And let's just let's do a sliding scale. So this is the SH101. And this is the MS101. So I think what we can hear it sounds to me like the MS-101's LFO has got a bit more just oomph to it, you know? Now that might be. Okay. Let's try the square. Take that out. So I think Yeah, it 
seems wider, doesn't it? That's square. And then we've got the random. Let's go to five on the uh, the clock right there. So the NFO rate is is different. It's not exactly the same. So we just need to slow that down. Not too bad once you get in there and then using the noise again I think you'll find that the LFO has got a bit more aggression to it on the MS 101 than it does on the the SH 101 um, and also because you've got this LFO right here um, just to give you an idea of what that does. So if we just put this on a square uh, LFO, that's on the, that. So that's um, with the LFO set at five on the low LFO rate, on the medium LFO rate, and on the high LFO rate. So it effectively kind of, I wouldn't say double. I can't say doubles the speakers. I really don't know, but it sounds. Sounds like that that virtually doubles the speed. So it gives you that wider range across there. But even set at the low rate, um, it's I think the LFO is a bit more aggressive on the MS101 than it is on the original. But again, I don't think that's a, a, a massive problem. Might be for some people, but I think in general, uh, that works pretty well. Uh, so there we go. So that's the um, the modulator on the VCO. Let's have a listen to see what that does to um, the filter. So let's put actually put all that back there and we're going to drop that out there. So we're going to put it back onto the, um, the triangle wave for the LFO. We're just going to set it down to about three on both machines. Frequency is up. We're going to have a sawtooth and a half a pulse width on the source mixer. And then we're just going to bring up the, the modulation on the, on the filter. So let's have a listen to it with that. Now let's, this is on the SH-101. Let's slowly bring up the, uh, the modulation on the filter. And then on the MS-101. Again, just a little bit of matching. Again, is pretty close. Um, now let's see if we modulate uh, the pulse width. We're doing that already, so it's there. Let's see how it works down slow. doing well. Um, I'm really, really struggling to make these sound in any way different. Um, let's try mixing it up a little bit here. So let's just give ourselves, say, three quarters on both the waveforms, the pulse width and the sawtooth. And let's get a bit um, aggressive on this. So we're going to drop the modulation out 
on the filter and the uh, oscillator. And let's now give it some nice uh, sub oscillator. Maybe just a tad of noise as well. So I'm just trying to make sure I copy myself across there. So we're still on the SH-101. So let's see if we can just replicate the filter over here on the MS-101. And we're just going to open up the envelope to about there. So we're going to get ballpark and then we, we'll be able to bring it back in. So uh, let's just start off with a single note. So we're a way off there. Just it's pretty good. Let's just knock up the oscillator a couple of uh, steps. pleasing sound together though. Um, let's go right up to the two foot mark. Again, you know, it's, it's just a case of just a little tweak here or there. Now, to give you an example, you, I haven't got the, the camera kit to do all the close-ups and everything, but I've pretty much got the filter settings. The MS-101 sounds a tad more per percussive, but I think we can just deal with that just... 
Yeah, so I'd say we're pretty close. Now, on the SH-101, uh, the filter is set at around, uh, the frequency cutoff is about four, the resonance is about seven, and the envelope is about six. So what's that, four, seven, six. Over here on the MS-101, we've got about five, eight, and seven. So it's a little higher on, on all of them. But the thing is, we're getting those sounds. So I'm able to create a sound on one machine and replicate it almost identically on the other one, give or take just a little smidge of, uh, of extra or maybe a little bit less on some of the settings. And it's, there it is. Um, What can I say? I am just uh, astounded at how close this is. Now, I know there's going to be a lot of people watching that are going to say, oh, you should do this, you should try that. And uh, I could, and we'd have a very long video, and I would begin to lose my voice, as I'm beginning to do now. And I'm probably going to bore you to tears. However, uh, I think we've established that every waveform, uh, every filter setting, every LFO setting, is completely matchable on the MS-101 compared to its SH-101 cousin, shall we call it. Um, so really, I think hopefully that's given you an idea. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the keyboard chops of uh, Matt Baxley or, or, or Mark Doty or any of those other great synth demonstrators, but what I wanted to do here was what a lot of people have been asking me, and that is to compare uh, the the, the basics and the filter settings and the oscillator and the waveforms to see how close they have got with these uh, these machines here, the MS-101. And I think we can all agree that um, pretty damn close doesn't even get that close to it. It's, it's amazingly, uh, it's just amazing how close You know, I'm just doing this machine next to machine, uh, no processing, uh, and in a mix. If you want to use this to replicate an SH-101, it's there. And of course, the MS-101 not only replicates pretty much everything, well, it does everything that's on the, on the SH-101, it also adds a bit more as well. So you have these things such as the uh, the frequency modulation on the filter, which is of course inspired by the, the famous Nova mod that was popular in the 90s. And some of the other Nova mod um, uh, modifications have been added in here as well, such as the external audio in. Um, what does it do? So it gives you it gives you that kind of dirtiness that you can add into the filter using the uh, six different sources here of frequency modulation. So you have the variable pulse width, you have um, the ramp sawtooth, you then have the sub oscillator, the three sub oscillator settings at one octave, uh, two octave, and two octave with a different cycle. And the noise as well can be used as a modulation source for the filter on top of the LFO. So it's an added thing and you can get some pretty crazy sounds um, and some uncrazy ones too, but it, it does really add to the flexibility of the synthesizer. Um, we haven't looked at the difference between Glide and Portamento. Let's quickly do that. So on the SH-101 you have, uh, it's called Portamento and it has a zero to 10 rotary and underneath it a switch that goes from auto to off to on. On the MS-101 it's called Glide. Again, 10 position rotary, or say a range of one, 0 to 10, it's, it's um, 
not fixed at all, but instead of auto off and on, you just have off and on. Now, somebody mentioned something in one of my videos that, oh, they've dropped the ball a bit because I like the auto portamento. And I really don't know if that's a big deal or not, because it's not something I've, I've massively used. So let's see what, um, if you put the portamento, let's just uh, give ourselves a bit of a clean sound on here. That'll do. Um, so auto portamento is on. Okay, so that's auto, auto portamento on there. Now let's just put the glide on. And um, what note would be there? We'll be with that. Oh, right there. So well, let's let's of course make our sound um, just a little bit more pleasing to the ear. Um, okay, so we're not going for sound matching. This will do. Okay. So there's the difference. So with the portamento on, play your first note, let go and play the second note, and it will apply the portamento, which when it's in the auto mode, it won't do. It will only do it if you press the second key while the first key is being held. And if you let go of that first key whilst holding the second key and then hitting another key, so it does it as long as you've got a key held. Whereas, and, and that's the, the glide function is basically the auto function of the portamento. Because if you Whereas if you put portamento on, on the SH-101, it's going to do it every time. Whereas it's not, on the MS-101, unless you hold that now. So, here we go, we've determined, and I've, it's, it's cleared up in my mind, Hope, hopefully it's cleared it up for you. So the MS-101, its version of the portamento feature on the SH-101 is off and auto. So if you want to equate it to the SH-101, the, what the MS-101 does is does off and auto. And it's got away, got, given what, uh, gotten rid of, should I say, of the on feature of the portamento where it's always doing it. And quite frankly, as, as I'm processing this in my brain as I'm talking to you, I kind of prefer the MS-101's interpretation. To have the portamento on all the time, yeah, that, that might be something that some people like. Personally, I like to control when, you know, I don't want it on every note, and I don't think it would sound great on every note. Maybe there are some genres of music it might. But I guess, again, that's why they've called it Glide as opposed to portamento, they're, they're distinguishing it between the two. And I guess glide is a bit more uh, controllable and the portamento on SH-101 is just a, an extra little option. But, so there you go, that's the, um, the, the biggest difference between those two things. Uh, as I've said in my previous videos, the, the control section here on the left is, again, apart from the portamento, is, is identical. Um, what you will notice, obviously, on the, um, the MS-101 is the the bender here is um, backlit with a, an orange LED. Uh, obviously, that doesn't happen on the SH-101. 
And we've also got, of course, the, the triangle waveform. Let's get rid of that and the noise. Now that doesn't come on the SH-101, so I'm not gonna try and do any comparisons, but of course it does add to the feature set of the MS and makes it a little bit more, gives you something else to play around because you can then blend that in with the other waveforms. Uh, to your tastes. Uh, so there you go. Um, I'm not gonna get into the sequencer today because it's still um, confusing me a little bit. It's um, It takes a bit of getting used to, but um, suffice to say that it does everything that the SH-101 sequencer does uh, and also has more options. It has more capacity and so does the arpeggiator. The arpeggiator on the SH-101 was simply down, up and down and up, whereas uh, on the MS-101 you've got up, down, you've got randoms, you've got two octaves, one octaves, uh, there's a whole plethora of, of different uh, settings in there, so it expands on that as well. And again, I'm not going to be able to show you the external audio in feature. Maybe we'll, we'll do that in another video. But um, for the purposes of this, um, I think it can safely be said that the Behringer MS-101 has more than matched the Roland SH-101 uh, in almost every single parameter that they both share. And the only thing I would say is that if you're trying to replicate exact settings, you're not gonna get the same sound. You do need to just have a little play around, but you'll find you know, the, the shape of your filter settings or your envelope settings are gonna match. They just need, might need to be a little bit more or less just to get a, a close enough sound. But pound for pound, they're, they're virtually identical in terms of the, uh, the way that these things sound. And on that note, I'm going to stop. Um, that's the, 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 the reason for this demonstration. We weren't going to do any fancy playing. It was simply comparing the core features of the MS-101 with the machine that inspired it, the, the, the Roland SH-101, and I think we've done that quite successfully. So stay tuned to this YouTube channel. Uh, subscribe, hit that button. Um, also, you can follow me on the blog, which is www.failedmuso.com forward slash blog, gets you to the, the meaty bits in there, and you'll be able to see all my MS-101 posts, as well as posts about other things uh, that are, probably will be of interest to you. You can follow me on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash failedmuso, Instagram forward slash failedmuso, Twitter is at failedmuso. It's really easy to keep in touch with me. Send me your questions. Um, I am a member of the, uh, there's a Behringer MS-101 user group on Facebook. I'm a member there and I've been answering people's questions and hopefully help them out with their decisions. Um, you can send me a, a message on uh, Twitter or in the Facebook page, or you can comment on any of the posts uh, uh, in the blog. Or of course, you can comment here on this video, but please do subscribe um, because I am hoping to have more of these videos, not just of the MS-101, not just of other Behringer products, but other things that are going to be coming our way across the, the next 12 months and beyond. So please do subscribe and um, share in the fun. Thanks ever so much for watching, and I hope that that's answered a load of your questions. And um, there you go. Behringer MS-101, Roland SH-101, almost peas out of the same pod. Thank you.